So first, I'll talk about how you can get started building mobile applications if you're starting a new project. In the doc wiki, we have a quick start guide which takes you through the different steps of creating a starting application and adding capabilities to it. We also have an application guide that you can take and walk through all the aspects of building a mobile application using FireMonkey. We have lots of tutorials and samples on the doc wiki. We also have an ebook that you can download, which contains all of the mobile application development tutorials all in one PDF file. And finally, we have lots of videos on the Embarcadero TechNet channel on YouTube. There are playlists for different topics, including a whole set of how to get started videos, including setting up your configuration, connecting to devices, building your first applications, doing special operations with mobile devices, as well as other types of projects. Now, when you're faced with getting started building mobile apps and you have an existing VCL application, you can do a manual operation where you create a FireMonkey project, just file new multi-device application, either in Delphi or C++. And then for a lot of the code, your components, non-visual controls, just copy and paste from an existing VCL application into your FireMonkey application. Of course, if you're using FireMonkey only on Windows, then you can use some of the Windows-isms and Windows API levels. If you're going to build a multi-device mobile application that runs on iOS and Android, then you'll be limited to only using user interface components and some non-visual controls that aren't Windows specific. There's a great document that's available on the doc wiki about differences between VCL and FMX when you're doing this kind of manual migration of parts of a VCL application. Your second choice would be to leave your VCL applications as they are and extend them by using the technology we have that can run on mobile called app tethering. This allows you to do parts of your application, for example, data entry, or maybe using devices and sensors, and then sending the data via network or Bluetooth connectivity to your VCL application. You put a tethering manager and app profile component in your VCL application, and you have the equivalence over on your mobile side. So you can isolate the mobile parts that you need, but still leverage and reuse your VCL application. And app tethering supports both sending and receiving data, as well as executing actions. So if you have actions on your VCL side, you can execute those. So think of the mobile device in the case of app tethering, like a remote control that you use at home on your TV set. This is a VCL application uh, that keeps track of, of products and the amount of stock in there. And then anytime a product is below its minimum stock, we want to send a, a notification uh, to the connected companion tethered apps and give these people the option of, uh, of ordering new products. So this could be me here in New York City, and let's say we have David out in California. Multiple folks can be connected to this app. So I'm gonna take my remote companion app and connect it to this uh, database app. And it sends me this shopping list of, of items that need to be reordered. So that's me in New York, and David could be in California doing the same thing. So we're out there in the field, whatever, doing whatever we're doing, and we see, uh, we see we get this shopping list sent to our mobile devices. So here, I here in New York says that this one product needs a thousand more units. So I can click the, the buy 100. And we see that that resource gets sent to the, the central database app and it executes the buy command to buy another 100. All of the connected client apps get the refresh. And let's say David here in California sees he needs to buy 100 more of, of this product. He selects it, the resource gets sent to the app tethered app, and the, the buy command goes in for that, and all of the uh, connected apps uh, receive the update too. The two main components are a uh, tethering manager component and a tethering profile component. And all of these components is where we can create the, the resources. So the shopping list, how it gets sent between the connected tethered apps is we created a resource course shopping list. It's got a resource type of data. And then any time that resource changes from the profile, there's an event that says on resource received. So anytime we receive a new resource, we, we update the inventory, we put the order in to purchase another 100 units of that product. And a third way to migrate your existing VCL applications is to use the Meta Converter. And I have the URL there. What it does is it converts your VCL form into a FireMonkey form. If you have database access component, it'll create the live bindings that'll bind database access and fields 
to the user interface components because FireMonkey doesn't have equivalents of database components like you have in the VCL with a DB edit versus a, a T edit. What FireMonkey provides is live binding mechanism that lets you bind any data set and any data source into your user interface component. So it's much more flexible that way. The Meta Converter supports standard VCL components that come with Brad Studio Berlin. It also supports some third-party components like T-Chart, for example. And the FAQ on the Meta Converter site will show you what third-party components are currently supported. And then you can contact the developers at Meta Converter if you need additional third-party components supported. In now, inside the IDE, you also have support for setting up different target platform configurations. For Android, you have application store and development. So in Android, you'll use development for your development cycles with a device directly connected. And then you'll finally go and build an application store version of your application that'll be code signed. And then you can use that to submit that Android application into the Google Play Store. For iOS, we support uh, three targets, iOS device 32-bit, that's for development use and in-house distribution. Apple doesn't support you submitting 32-bit applications anymore. You have to submit either 64-bit applications or these fat apps or universal apps that have 64-bit and 32-bit. You can choose development for your development cycles where you're directly connected to the different devices, connected to your Macintosh. You can do an ad hoc deploy, which creates an application that you can distribute in-house. You contact Apple and it'll give you information about how to set up an enterprise store inside of your firewall, up to 100 devices in a year and so on. And then finally, you can target application store for 64-bit for the final build that you submit to Apple. And we'll talk later about going through the process of submitting Android and iOS applications to the App Store. There's also the iOS simulator target. That's for Delphi only currently. If you want to simulate and test using the iOS simulator, if you don't have an iOS device. And finally, we have support for OS 10 targeting. There, normal is the same thing as doing development where you do your development cycles and run the applications on your Mac. And you can also choose the application store for the final build before submitting the app to the Mac App Store.